Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video on motivation theories. This is the second of three videos in this series on motivation theories. There are four things that you need to do while you're listening to this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go back over information. The third thing that you need to do is have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you're able to write into your vocabulary sheets the definitions of any key terms as well as the meanings of any words that you're unfamiliar with. The fourth and final thing that you need to do is to have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through the video, I will tell you what to write in your summary books. When you've finished watching this video, please read the pages from the textbook referred to on this slide. If you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then please supplement your Cornell notes with that additional information. Well, let's get started. We've already seen that employees are critical to the success of a business because the business relies on its employees to achieve the business objectives of the business. One of the biggest challenges that managers face is to manage their employees effectively. That is, to manage them in a way that motivates those employees to achieve the business objectives. In this series of three videos, we look at three theories of motivation. That is, theories about how managers can motivate their employees to achieve the business objectives. Later on, we'll look at the strategies that managers can use to motivate their employees, and we'll see how these strategies are supported by each of these different theories of motivation. Each of these three theories of motivation proceeds on the basis that employees will be motivated to achieve the objectives of a business if the achievement of those objectives is consistent with employees satisfying their own needs or achieving their own goals. Put another way, the key to a business achieving its business objectives is to align the individual goals of each employee with the business objectives of the business, so that by achieving their own individual goals, each employee of the business will be contributing to the achievement of the business objectives of the business. The difference between the three theories of motivation that we'll be looking at is in their conception of what motivates employees. Let me remind you of the learning intentions for this series of videos. Um, which you already should have written in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention is that you should be able to explain the key principles of three theories of motivation. These three theories are Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, Locke and Latham's Goal Setting Theory, and Lawrence and Naraya's Four Drive Theory. These key principles will be explained in this series of three videos. The second learning intention is that you need to be able to examine and apply the key principles of these three theories of motivation. We'll be achieving this learning intention through you undertaking in class a series of learning activities that require you to apply uh, the key principles of each of the three theories to case studies and case scenarios. In this video, we'll be looking at our second theory of motivation, which is Locke and Latham's Goal Setting Theory. According to Locke and Latham's Goal Setting Theory, employees are motivated by being given challenging goals. This theory takes the form of a cycle which consists of five stages. In this regard, it's very different from Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, where there is a ranking of needs that employees want to have satisfied. The first stage in the cycle is the manager and the employee jointly establish goals for the employee that comply with the SMART principle. We've previously looked at the SMART principle and we'll come back to it on the next slide. Now it is critical that the employee's goals are aligned, that is, are consistent with 
the business's business objectives because we want the employee to contribute to the achievement of the business objectives by meeting their individual goals. The second stage is that the employee uses persistence and effort to try to achieve each goal, that is, to try to complete each particular job or task that has been set for them. Because the goals have been set jointly by the manager and the employee, the employee is highly motivated to achieve them because the employee has accepted responsibility for doing this by being involved in setting the goals in the first place. The third stage is that the manager provides periodic, that is regular, feedback to the employee. This enables the manager and the employee to adjust the goals if for some reason they've ceased to be appropriate, for example because of unforeseen events. And it also enables the manager and the employee to determine how the employee is progressing towards the achievement of the goals and whether the employee may need to do something differently to ensure that the goals are achieved. This is why the goals have to be measurable, because if they are not measurable, it's not possible to determine the employee's progress against these goals. The fourth stage is to determine, at the end of the time period for the achievement of the goals, whether the employee has achieved the goals. Again, this is why the goals need to be measurable. Also at this stage, the manager and the employee need to evaluate how successful the employee has been in achieving the goals. Has the employee failed to achieve the goals, and if so, why? Or has the employee overachieved the goals? This leads us to the fifth stage, which is to provide an outcome for the employee. If the employee has achieved the goals, this outcome could be some kind of recognition or reward, such as a pay rise, a bonus or a promotion. If the employee has failed to achieve the goals, then the outcome uh, could be providing the employee with some form of support, such as training, so that the employee uh, is able to develop the skills that the employee needs to achieve the goals. In other cases, this outcome could be some kind of punitive action or sanction, such as a pay cut, a demotion, or at worst, dismissal for underperformance. Once the uh, cycle has been completed, it's time to set new goals for the employee, and then to start the cycle all over again. Remember that our first learning intention is that you need to be able to explain the key principles of Locke and Latham's goal setting theory. On this slide, I set out these key principles. Please include a summary of these key principles in your summary books. The first key principle underlying Locke and Latham's goal setting theory is that all employees are motivated by being given challenging goals. Now, you may recall that I previously said that a significant difference between the three theories of motivation that we're looking at is in their conception of what motivates employees. Under Maslow's hierarchy of needs, employees are motivated by having their needs satisfied. In contrast, under Locke and Latham's goal-setting theory, employees are motivated by being given challenging goals. Importantly, for a goal to motivate an employee, it must be set in accordance with the SMART principle. This means that the goal must be specific so that the employee knows what needs to be achieved. The goal must be measurable so it is possible to determine whether the goal has been achieved or how close the employee is to achieving it. The goal must be achievable and realistic, that is, the goal should be challenging, but able to be reached within the set time frame. Goals that can be easily met don't provide the challenge which is necessary to motivate employees. On the other hand, goals which are impossible to meet simply demotivate employees because they can't meet those goals no matter how hard they work. And finally, the goal must be time-bound so as to provide a degree of urgency that encourages the employee to get on with doing whatever is necessary to meet the goal. The second key principle is that the SMART goal must be set jointly by the manager and the employee so that the employee has some 
buy-in, that is, so that the employee agrees to the goal rather than has the goal imposed upon them. In this way, the employee will be more willing to take responsibility uh, for achieving the goal and will be more motivated to try to achieve the goal. A significant difference between Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Locke and Latham's goal setting theory is that in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it is only where an employee has self actualization needs that setting challenging goals will motivate the employee. Uh, this is because challenging goals are a way of meeting an employee's need for job satisfaction. In contrast, under Locke and Latham's goal setting theory, challenging goals are considered to be a motivation for all employees, irrespective of what other needs they may have. Of all the motivation theories, Locke and Latham's goal setting theory is the one that focuses most directly on the link between employees' motivation and the performance of the business. And this leads to the third key principle, which is that under Locke and Latham's goal setting theory, the goals of the individual employees must be aligned, that is, they must be consistent with the business objectives, so that by achieving their individual goals, the employees will effectively be contributing to the achievement of the business objectives. This is the management uh, by uh, objectives or MBO that we've looked at in a previous video on employees, business objectives and motivation. Now this discussion reveals a potential disadvantage of applying Locke and Latham's goal setting theory. This disadvantage is that it can be time consuming for a manager to set individual goals um, for employees to regularly monitor each employee's progress towards achieving those goals, to provide regular feedback on that progress, to evaluate goal achievement, and to determine an appropriate outcome based on the extent to which the employee has achieved the goals that have been set for that employee. This brings us to the end of this video. You should now be able to explain the key principles of Locke and Latham's goal setting theory. Insofar as the second learning intention is concerned, that is, that you should be able to examine and apply the key principles of Locke and Latham's goal setting theory, you'll be achieving that learning intention through completing the learning activities in class. Don't forget to read the pages from the textbook which are referred to on the first slide, and if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Well, thank you for your attention.